Hello all, my name is Sarah Dietrich, Ramsey Ramza Peach, if you're new around here, and today we have a lot of Microsoft announcements, and one of the things is the new Microsoft Surface Go 2. So we have it here, now, live. I'm gonna unbox this as we unpack every single announcement. I thought it'd be perfect to talk about the Microsoft announcements and the new Go outside in the green. This is a new environment for us to hang out. So um, you will hear airplanes, you'll hear some animals in the, in the backyard, you'll hear the birds and the breeze and anyways. Anyways! So there's the new Microsoft Surface Go 2, the Book 3, also the headphones and the earbuds all coming out. So four new additions coming out very soon to your faces. The thing that I'm most excited about, I don't have it yet, but that will be the Surface Book 3. You know I'm gonna do a full laptop review on that. Oh, I didn't think I would need a sharp object for this. There we go. So the Surface Go is the smallest Surface tablet and at the most affordable price point. So the Surface Go 2 starts at $399, has that built-in kickstand. You know, they've pushed back the bezels a bit. The dimensions are actually um, exactly the same. The display is just upgraded to a 1920 by 1080 display. You have a micro SD on the back. You can upgrade your storage up to one terabyte with a micro SD card. We have a five megapixel front facing camera that does 1080p but then also a back camera with an 8 megapixel 1080p HD camera feels good nothing too different about um, the outside of it there's the kickstand so it's almost fully articulating the tablet itself is 1.2 pounds let's fire it up here has a 10.5 inch display and is running windows 10 in s mode now if you're familiar mostly with the apple ecosystem and ipads i would relate this one to apple's 329 dollars ipad just titled ipad so the ipad is a bit bigger also much more thin but in terms of bezels you know the the microsoft go i like that the bezels are completely even you know with the ipad you have the thick bezels on top and bottom and then they get thinner on the side okay cortana i'm talking so in the world that we're living in a lot of people are doing meetings right you have zoom meetings microsoft team meetings uh you're skyping people facetiming people in these new products you're going to notice studio mic upgrades so the audio is going to be better um and i love I love seeing that there's, you know, 1080p front-facing cameras. Here is the charging brick with the Surface connector. We love our proprietary connectors, don't we? No. Okay, so that's for that box. And then we have the type cover, which is sold separately. So this is $3.99 by itself. There's so many animal sounds out here. <laughs> Okay, we're kind of used to this type of keyboard from Microsoft. Kind of like a sticky smooth vibe. Really good action, yeah, for sure. Pretty self-explanatory, I would have to say. So we have the connectors in the bottom, connect the keyboard with. On the side here, we actually have a USB-C connector, as well as a headphone jack and the Surface connector. And then that's it for the ports, besides the, the micro SD. Noise kickstand so it's really nice is you don't even need the keyboard to have it propped up I'm a fan of that I mean this is like the perfect angle for note-taking just a little elevated and then halfway you know a trackpad is so foreign to iPads that you forget that just all of these surface lines like the keyboard includes a trackpad. You know, the keyboard is a little bit more smushed together than I'm used to, but again, this is a tiny device. So they claim a performance jump of up to 64% of the previous Go. This is now using the 8th Gen M Core processors. Let's create a pan here. Your memory options are in between four gigs and eight gigs, and then you start out with 128 gigs of storage. And again, that starting price is $399, and we're now in, so let's just just play around with it a little bit before we move on to the Surface Book 3 because I'm telling you I'm excited about the Surface Book 3. This I'm like okay I'm spending literally months on my iPad Pro review so I'm very into the tablet mode so I'm like hey this is cool let's give it the time of day but that Surface Book. that we're very 
excited about. It's about fame and what Hollywood does to people. This is our screenwriter. Our... Let's record some video with this front-facing camera. Hello. It is getting pretty dark out here, so I'm not doing it any favors, that's for sure. There are photo settings that you have to go in and specify that you want five megapixels instead of um, like a lower resolution. It's weird that it just doesn't do um, as high res as possible since it's not super high res to begin with. <laughs> this is me walking with this front facing camera, but there's also digital stabilization. So let's turn that on and see how it changes it. Okay, video stabilization is turned on. Uh, yeah, so it punched in a bit, which is expected, but it looks pretty stable, right? Just walking around. It's so funny to basically be running just full-fledged windows on this tiny tablet. Uh-oh, running into my first issue. I can't open up a, um, a page in Notion. So the reason I was having those issues, not being able to open up a page in Notion, the productivity app I use, is because I was in Windows 10 S mode. So S mode is a more limited version of Windows that comes on these Go devices. But Microsoft pitches it as, hey, it's more secure, it's more stable, and it's more speedy on these devices, which eh, might be the case, but you can't do much with it because Edge is the only web browser you can download. So when I tried to download Chrome, I basically got the pop-up of, hey, do you want to switch out of S mode? Well, heck yes. But then I downloaded Chrome, I opened Notion and Chrome and Edge, and it it worked perfectly. So now with just normal Windows 10 on there, it's functioning just like a miniature laptop and it's cool. I enjoy it. I wouldn't install Premiere or anything, you know, fancy desktop creative apps on it. Uh, this thing is for web surfing, note taking, all the things. But yeah, definitely knock it out of S mode, like immediately. <laughs> So the Surface Book 3 is Microsoft's most powerful laptop. So they say, you know, it has desktop level power, but then it's also a laptop and it's also a tablet. So you can completely unattach it from the keyboard and use it as a full fledged tablet. Compared to the previous Surface Books, we have a 50% performance jump with the new processors and new discrete NVIDIA graphics processors, which is exciting. So it has the updated 10th gen i5 and i7 processors, however, you know, not every processor is the same. There are so many different SKUs. So the new processors in the 13 inch and 15 inch Surface Book 3 are going to be the most comparable to the processors in the new 13 inch MacBook Pro. So these are the quad core i5 and i7s. Not to be confused with the i7 you can get in the MacBook Pro 16 inch, which is the six core i7. And then you can of course also upgrade to the eight core i9 in the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Since this is the top of the top laptops for Microsoft, of course, I would love to see that six core and eight core option, uh, but this laptop is super unique in its form factor, obviously, so you're gonna have some compromises, but what is not a compromise is the graphics. You're gonna have the dedicated NVIDIA graphics processors, which is amazing. If you're a Premiere user, you know that CUDA rendering, uh, and I actually have the models here. I, like, I'm not gonna memorize this. So for the 13 inch, you have the options of the Intel Iris Plus graphics, um, which is, you know, the integrated graphics, but then you start getting into the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 with Max-Q design. If you go with the i7 and the 13 inch, and then for the 15 inch, you have the option in between the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti with Max-Q design, or the NVIDIA Quadro RTX 3000 with Max-Q design, which, uh, that's pretty exciting, that's cool. So as you can imagine, the Book 3 is for those creative types, the workflows of Adobe, Autodesk, Hardcore Programming, Gaming, Steam, Xbox Game Pass. Both base models start with 256 gigabytes of storage, and then you can upgrade it up to one terabyte for the 13 inch, and also two terabytes for the 15 inch. We have the improved studio mics, the five megapixel front facing 1080p, just 100% 1080p front facing camera. And then we have the eight megapixel 1080p rear facing camera, cause yes, ooh, fancy laptop with a rear facing camera, but again, 
it's a tablet. You can take it off. So they have the two cameras. It has Wi-Fi 6 and the ability to upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM and it starts at $15.99. I am super curious to see how expensive this machine can get because um, on paper it's pretty impressive. However, I'm so excited to get my hands on it because the Surface Book 2, y'all, I did not like that thing. It had so much potential. It's one of Microsoft's most um, it, honestly exciting Surface devices, but I always had issues with the keyboard disconnecting, just uh, it being super finicky that's also super top heavy because you have to have enough of that hardware in the display so when you take it off, it's not useless. You know, you want it to be powerful when you take off that keyboard. I love all of the ports that you have on this guy. You have two USB-A ports, one USB-C. It's not Thunderbolt 3, which is a bummer, but you have a headphone jack, two Surface Connect pins, one on the keyboard, one on the tablet. This you can use for charging, connecting a display, connecting to one of their docks. They have new docks. The screen is compatible with the Surface dial and drum roll, please. It has a full SD card reader. That is fantastic for you photographers and video creators. The 15 inch display has a 3240 by 2160 display with that three by two aspect ratio that we all love so much. Why the Surface Book 3 gets me so excited is the sheer power. You guys know I love my Dell XPS 13 two-in-one so much. I can edit my videos in Premiere on it, but then I can also write notes with the Dell pen I have and then also edit pictures in Lightroom and use it for highlighting things and doing adjustments. I just love touch. I love a laptop with touch. Because even though the iPad Pro is fantastic and I can't wait to talk to you guys about it, there are still limitations when you can't do desktop apps on the iPad. So I think the Book 3 is going to be really great for those serious video and photo workflows and then you don't have to compromise on touch. You can do the Photoshop and Lightroom touch-ups with the Surface Pen. These are a lot of big additions to the Surface lineup and there's a lot. You know, the new ear buds, the new headphones. We got a lot of options now in the Microsoft ecosystem. Well, hey, if you enjoyed this video, let me know if you liked it. Hit that subscribe button down below for new videos every single week. And there's a new iPad Pro review video coming out this weekend, so stick around. Also, the Surface Book 3 review. Don't know when I'll have that, hopefully soon. And then I'll definitely do a full review on that, share it with you guys, so make sure you're subscribed. Hey, I have a podcast titled That Creative Life. Look it up wherever you listen to podcasts. Really great guests every single week. Until next time, guys, stay peachy. Okay, bye.